All right. Continuing on our discussion about water. Today, I'm going to talk about water system maintenance. In most of the talks and presentations that I have seen so far, people usually focus on water treatment, water sanitation. But before going forward with water sanitation, we need to make sure that our system maintenance is in a good condition. Because if there is something wrong with our piping size, with our piping level, with our nipple drinkers, and anything related to water system, our water treatment protocol will not work. So before going forward, we need to pay attention to the water system maintenance. So first thing we need to do on our poultry farms is to prepare a checklist to see where we need to look at, which location we need to double check and how frequently we need to do that. Every single day we need to check the drinkers for any leak or malfunction or sagging area. If this is your drinker line, we need to make sure that this is even without any pinch points or sagging area. If your drinker line is not even, then you are providing opportunity for biofilm formation inside your water line. Then you are providing opportunity to have wrong water pressure throughout your water line. That's why we need to make sure our water line is even. And we need to do that every single day. Also, as I said, look at the nipple drinkers. If there is any leakage, switch the uh, nipple drinker. Or if there is any build-up scale, try to get rid of that. I'll talk about those protocols in my next videos. Check the standpipes. Here, there is a picture you can see. Uh, this picture actually shows the steps for uh, between flock cleaning, but the point I brought this picture here just to show you the uh, standpipe. And you can see that standpipe should be clear. You can see inside the standpipe to see the water level, to check the water pressure, and also to see if there is any biofilm or floating materials inside the uh, standpipe. So we need to check it regularly. Every week, we need to check water flow rate in nipple drinkers. I'll, take, I'll talk about that in my next slides, how to do that. Check the, and check and replace the filters in every place of your water system, either in water tank, either in entrance room, wherever you have filters, you need to make sure that they are not clogged and they are clean. So check them based on manufacturer's advice or earlier if a decrease in water flow is noticed. Because if water pressure or water flow rate is going to decrease, it shows that uh, something going wrong inside the water system, either scale buildup, biofilm buildup, or 
uh, clog the filters. Check the wellhead or borehead and clear strainer for debris. You need to check the wellhead and your uh, source water system every month or after any unusual events like heavy rain, like flooding, any repair on your system. To make sure that your water, side, water source is not contaminated. And test pH level after filters. Because if water pH uh, changes, it shows that something is wrong with your water. And we will talk about that on on-farm testing tools. Water storage or uh, header tank. Check it every three months. Check the inlet and outlet screens for any clogged or build up scales. And every year, try to check the structural condition, sludge level. There are some devices out there. They are really cheap. You can uh, monitor the sludge level on the bottom of your uh, water storage tanks. And check to see if the internal uh, cleanliness is good enough. It means that inside the water storage tanks should be clean without any greasy stuff, without any uh, biofilm. And between the flux or every two months, check inside the regulators. You can see a picture here, down here, that what's going on inside the regulator, which is full of biofilm. If you do not open it up, how would you know what's going on inside the water line? And if you keep it for the next flock, for sure you are going to compromise your flock performance and health. All right. Usually, one of the questions that we should ask uh, producers is about cracked piping size. Are you using cracked pipe pipes, cracked size of pipes? Sometimes they don't have any idea. So here, I'm going to provide a guideline. Look, for a 40 foot by 500 foot broiler house, you will need about 10 to 12 gallon per minute per house. GPM is gallon per minute. One gallon is about 3.78 liter. So you can easily convert these values to liters if you are working with liters. From this amount, two to three gallon per minute is for drinking and eight to nine gallon per minute is for cool cells if you have any. So you need to know how many poultry house you know you have. Maybe you have two barns, three barns, whatever, and you know the their size. So based on this protocol, you can just calculate how much water you need based on gallon per minute. Then you can look at this table and see, for example, if you need uh, 20 gallons per minute, GPM, 20 GPM, then your pipe size should be one and a half inch. Or let's say based on your uh, farm size, if you need 40 gallons per minute, then your pipe size should be at least two inches. So you can just calculate the amount of water you need and uh, then figure out what the piping size should be. And please, if you have any questions, 
ask me down there in the comments. We can have always these kinds of conversations. The other important thing about, uh, about water maintenance is looking at uh, brooding phase or starter phase because most of the farmers use a confined area for young chicks during brooding. It means that they are not spreading chicks all over the barn. They make like a pen or fence and they are keeping the young chicks on one side of the barn. But the fact is that your drinker lines are all around the barn, right? And on those of brood area that you are not raising any young chicks, there is water in your water line and inside the water line is warm, especially during the first week is above 30 degree. And there is no movement of water because there is no chicks over there to drink the water. So the, you know, uh, flow of water is really slow and it's a good opportunity for biofilm to build up for opportunistic pathogens. So that's why uh, we need to flush that area of brood end lines before turning out the birds to the whole barn. In fact, not only you need to flush that place, that area, you need to flush the whole water system. And recently I was talking to some broiler producers, some of them flushing their water lines every single day to keep it clean. So the other thing about water maintenance is water flow rate in nipple drinkers. So in fact, we have two types of nipple uh, drinkers, 180 degree uh, and 360 degree. What does it mean? So if you look at the nipple drinker, there is a pin here, right? So it can be triggered. As you can see here, this pin can be triggered in one side. It is a 180 degree. It means that if the chick, you know, is pecking on this uh, nipple drinker, uh, it can be triggered in one direction. So the water flow rate is a little bit lower compared to 360 degree uh, nipples. In 360 degree nipples, this pin can be triggered all around the, you know, uh, nipple drinker. It means that from any direction that it can be hit by uh, chicks, the water can come out and the flow rate is high. But we need to make sure that we are using the right nipple type. If you are using for broilers, of course, their growth rate is high and uh, their water requirement is high. So in that case, we need to use 360 degree nipples. But if you are working with layers or broiler breeders, then you don't need to use uh, 360. And we need to use actually 180 degree nipple drinkers. And if we don't use the right type of nipple drinker, we're going to create problem. Let's say for broilers, if you are using 180 degree nipple drinkers, you will have uh, less water provided for chicks. So it can compromise their feed intake, their health. But on the other hand, if for breeders or layers you are using uh, 360 degree nipples, again, uh, you're going to create wet litter problem because they 
they don't need to drink so much water and by triggering the pin and pouring the water they can create a wet litter problem and subsequently increase in ammonia level ammonia is a gas in poultry barns which can compromise the health and also the ventilation and uh, you know by having a wet litter you need you will see uh, leg problems foot pad uh, problems and other disease so these are some things we need to keep in mind when we are working with water system maintenance other thing ensure drinker lines are level i talked about that if it's not level and there is a pinch points or sagging area it's going to create biofilm uh, problem and also it's going to compromise the water pressure and drip cup cleaning so in fact underneath this uh, nipple drinker there is usually a drip cup so we need to keep it clean especially if you see build up scales you need to uh, clean them thoroughly between the flocks back in the day we were using uh, hydrochloric acid and it worked very well but you can use any you know cleaners to get rid of uh, those build up scales also citric acid can work very well because citric acid usually can eliminate uh, those build up scales which is a consequence of minerals so what about flow rate flow rate should be about 20 milliliter per minute from nipple drinkers during the first week during the second week and the third week until third week uh, you need to increase the flow rate to 60 to 70 milliliter per minute and after that it should be 70 to 100 milliliter per minute so how we are going to measure the flow rate so it's really simple let's say this is the water line and we want to measure the flow rate from nipples not only from one nipple you need to check it at different locations at the beginning of the barn and at the middle and at the end of the barn because water pressure can be different from uh, place to place so what you need to do you need to have a graduated container and you need to put it uh, underneath the uh, nipple drinkers and then just trigger it uh, and for example by using a tweezers or anything you want don't just trigger it and wait for 30 seconds after 30 seconds look at the container to see how many milliliter water has been collected so just times that value by two because we are going to calculate it per minute you measured it for 30 seconds and that's why we are going to double it multiply it by two to see how many milliliter per minute you have the water flow rate and then compare it with this table to see based on your bird age if you are getting the right flow rate or not especially if you see different flow rate from the beginning and end of the drinker line it shows that something is going wrong inside the water line and you need to uh, clean it you need to inspect the stand pipes you know looking at the quantity of water inside the standpipe and quality of water again i showed this picture already here is the uh, standpipe so for day one 
the height of water should be around five centimeter inside the uh, that stand pipe. For the second week, you're gonna increase it to nine centimeter. Uh, week four, it should go to fourteen centimeter, and after week six, it's gonna uh, go to twenty centimeter. This is the level of water inside the standpipe. And it shows the pressure, how much pressure you have in your water system. It's the, actually uh, an indicator of water pressure inside the drinker line. And always keep this standpipe clean. So the, there should not be any dust around that. And you need to see uh, through the standpipe and check for any debris or discoloration or any biofilm inside the uh, standpipe. So as a guideline uh, on your main pipeline, the water pressure should be around two to four bar, or if you translate it to uh, pound per square inch or PSI, it should be 30 to 60 PSI. And after the pressure reducing valve, this water pressure should be 1.5 to 2 bar or 20 to 30 PSI. And we need to make sure that we are following this instruction. But when you are going to flush out the system, uh, you know, to get rid of biofilm or any buildup, then we will need to use the high pressure just to get rid of those uh, debris and you can flush out the system. But when you are using it for birds, this is the guideline for water pressure. The other important thing about uh, water system maintenance is looking inside the uh, pipeline. It means that this water line, I can't see inside it. So I need to have a camera to go through and see what's going on inside the water line. Here in this picture, you can see this yellow stuff. They are built up biofilm. And if you have a camera like this, uh, inspection camera, so you can just uh, put these holes inside the pipeline and go through the pipeline and uh, look at the, any buildup or scales inside the uh, pipeline. And here there is a you know, uh, a screen or monitor that you can look uh, at the video that you are, uh, you know, capturing from inside the pipes. Another important thing is to compare source water with end of the line water. Look at here. On the right side, you can see water from well, from the water source. It is really clean, but you can see the water sample from the poultry house collected from end of the line. Look at the discoloration, look at the debris. So where did they come from? Were they in water source? No, because you are comparing two samples from water source and from the end of the line it shows that something is going wrong inside your water system. It is either in water storage tank, in, uh, you know, pipeline, nipples, drinker line. There is a problem and we need to investigate that. And to do that, actually, you can compare water sample from every location together. For example, from uh, water source, from uh, water storage tank, and from entrance room, beginning of the drinker line in the barn, end of the drinker line in the barn, and then you can 
have an idea where this discoloration and debris start or come from. So by that, I hope you enjoyed this video and you can get some benefit out of it. We are going to continue our water discussion in the next videos. Uh, as always, please feel free to subscribe to the channel and share it with your peers. And also do not forget to leave your constructive comments down there in the comments area. Enjoy your day wherever you are. And I'll see you in the next episode. Take care.